What is going on, guys? And welcome to episode 29 of the Listen Whilst You Step podcast. Today, we are joined by Mr. Joe Parrish. For those of you who don't know, Joe has been coaching me for the last uh, 10 weeks. Yeah, I think 10 weeks now, mate. Yeah, 10 weeks um, as of when recording this podcast at the start of March. And uh, the mission is to turn me into the ultimate hybrid uh, athlete. There was me talking before, like, mate, I've definitely neglected my cardio. 10 weeks in, there's me going, mate, I'm going to run a marathon. Um, it's been a bit of a <laughs> bit of a transition, but I'm super excited to kind of get into this conversation. I want to say a massive thank you for coming on, mate. I, it, it means a lot to me. Um, but I won't blow your smoke up your ass too much. I want to give the guys a little bit of an intro, who you are, what you do. Incredible, dude. Listen, first and foremost, an absolute pleasure, privilege, and honor. So, honestly, thank you so much. Uh, I think whenever I get asked this question, it's like, wow, there's so much you could explore. How can I now really simplify this and make this as kind of quick and easy, easily digestible as possible? So, uh, pretty much, I am the coach's coach. I help uh, ambitious coaches stay on top of their own body shape, health, energy, and performance. Uh, it's been a roller coaster of a seven to eight year coaching journey for me. Already had, always had the aspiration of being a professional footballer. I uh, had an incredible opportunity to uh, pursue that career for two years before basically I didn't make the grade. Or what, I, was, I, wasn't good, I wasn't good enough. Um, and then fundamentally the journey kind of grew and, and, and started to develop from there. Uh, I've worked with absolutely everybody uh, over the last six or seven years from Betty and co doing kind of 60s plus stretch and tone dance classes uh, when I was at university, which still to this day, by the way, is the most nerve-wracking thing that I've ever had to do. <laughs> Mate, that was a tough crowd. That was a seriously tough crowd, I have to say. Uh, all the way through then to working with Commonwealth athletes, uh, Gem Pop, and then uh, more recently spending a lot of time working with competitors and and everything else uh, until I got to this point whereby I now realize that my calling, my vision, my mission uh, has been completely centered around helping coaches fulfill their full potential by getting the person thriving so that then the people in the profit will follow because of my own lessons, mistakes, failures uh, that I've been through, through this coaching process that have been pretty hard to take, but now upon reflection, allow me to do what I do. Yeah, absolutely. It's incredible because I think we've actually kind of almost had a fairly similar journey into the fitness industry, both very kind of sports ath athlete kind of orientated, basically weren't good enough, <laughs> and then kind of fell into the fitness industry. Was the gym always such a big part of your life from a young age though? Yeah, massive, mate. I still remember, I actually had a conversation with my dad yesterday and I'm actually just about to send him a set of dumbbells. But actually, when I was reflecting upon that whilst I was having the conversation with him, like I always remember the cast iron York dumbbells that he used to have under his bed. The you know, the ones that roll on. <laughs> yeah, the screw ones, that was it. And he just used to have a stack of men's health magazines. And I just remember just going to his house on a weekend and just doing curls for hours, um, re reading these men's health magazines. And I remember going back to my mom's uh, on, a, on a Sunday night and I couldn't move my arms because I'd done that many curls. <laughs> she was like, what's wrong with you? I was like, honestly, I don't, I've just done, so I was about 10 years old and must just must've been just doing curls for hours, nothing else, just bicep curls. Um, but yeah, it's been a massive part. Even when I was on the uh, on the football pitch and even when I spent two years playing full-time professional, um, the, the coaches used to tell me that I had the turning circle of a milk float just because I used to spend so much time in the gym. And uh, I, always spend, I always had this aspiration of just wanting to spend my life immersed in training and developing and improving myself. And whenever I was thinking about going to training in terms of the football side, I was always looking forward to the end of the day so that I could then go to the gym and go and train chest and arms and whatever it was going to be. So it's always been a massive, massive part of me. And it's uh, now an incredible opportunity to be able to coach and develop and progress and help others learn from the mistakes that I've made. Yeah, absolutely. I was exactly the same. I used to, towards the end of when, before I finished up playing rugby, I definitely found myself starting to be like, oh, this is going to affect my gym session on Tuesday. And I'm like, <laughs> just, I think, I think my priorities and what I was more passionate about just def definitely started to shift. Um, be interesting though, obviously you experienced your own kind of um, level of burnout and things like that. I think it'd be really interesting to touch on that. Um, and then kind of moving into things kind of, cause I know there's a lot of the listeners who are starting up to going into a lot of exams for finance degrees or even kids and things listening to that. And just be interesting to kind of talk about that energy management. If we touch on the kind of burnout and what kind of led you to where you are, what you're doing with coaches, which is absolutely incredible by the way. And the energy and passion that you bring is just literally priceless. Dude, I appreciate that. And I think, Big, big thing for me now why I do what I do is because upon reflection, 
Um, I know we now center everything within the high performance coach center upon kind of these four key core pillars, body, business, brain, and balance. And the reason that's come about was because there was a period of time whereby I'd spent the entirety of my life dedicated to building the very best physique. Um, and as a byproduct, I, would, I had neglected my business, my career, my studies, my development at that moment in time. There'd also been periods of times where I'd been going all in on my career and business and coaching and clients. And I'd neglected my own personal well-being and my own health. And then there was a period of time whereby I was in pretty good shape. Training was going really well. And my business and coaching business and um, that development was in a fantastic place. Uh, but fundamentally, my missus thought that I was a bit of a kid <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and started to question like, well, actually, you, know, you, you prefer going to the gym and your clients and your business more than you enjoy spending time with me. And that was also then a massive, massive turning point in my life that made me kind of sit back, reevaluate and reassess it now allow me to realize, right, okay, as coaches, and not even as coaches, as people, we have so many different roles and responsibilities that we have to play now. Like this, we're constantly being pushed and pulled in different directions and in different places. And you've got all these spinning plates. And it's like, how do I now manage my energy to the best of my ability? And um, again, massive turning point was end of 2000 of 17 going into 2018. Um, training was all in business and coaching clients were absolutely all in. And I was just going hammer for tong. And I didn't, take the opportunity to really raise awareness around the red flags that I'd kind of been seeing or experiencing. And I just had this thought process of like, I'm just going to hustle, work, grind, and I'll start taking better care of myself, AKA take some time off and take a step away in X, Y, or Z time. Once I get to this goal. And of course that goal never happens because the needle always moved. Um, and then basically spent, pfft, well, in and out of A&E over the Christmas period, because I was getting these head pains, like tingly sensations through uh, my arms. Like, they didn't know what was wrong with me. I spent the entirety of Christmas basically asleep in bed. Um, had to muster up the energy to drive back from Devon to Scotland, which is like an eight hour drive with uh, sleeps on the way up just because I was so fatigued. And then the start of 2018 spent pretty much yeah six to eight weeks just in and out of bed, unable to train. And I didn't, I didn't know what it was. And now upon reflection, yeah, I just basically have pushed and accelerated too much and too hard. And that's basically now why I, now why I do what I do, you know? Yeah, that must have been scary. I always say one of my biggest fears is like blowing up. Genuinely, I, I had this conversation with Kira, the mindset guy. I was like, my biggest fear is one, becoming a cog in the system and doing the same shit that everyone else does because I was not put on this planet to be average and neither was any person, in my opinion. Um, but then also just blowing up and like ruining everything that I'd worked my ass off. That must have been a pretty scary experience. Yeah, upon reflection, you know, like my, my self confidence, my self worth, my self esteem completely tanked um you know like you're questioning yourself and at, at, at that time obviously i couldn't see the wood for the trees so i didn't i didn't know i didn't have that like experience or understanding and nor did anybody else around me really you know so um i think for me upon reflection it's the best worst thing that's happened to me because i think that's it like like my, I want my coaching business now to be an expression of who I am, what I do, why I do it, and the le the lessons that I've now taken from the mistakes that I've made. Um, and I think that those periods of times, like you almost have to get to that point. You know, you have to know where are my limits and basically how you have to overstep that line, I believe, in order then for you to be able to realize, well, what are your limitations? What are your barriers? And then what are the things you know? Need to raise awareness around to go yeah okay do you know what side you've actually maybe pushed a little bit too much here dude you need to take a step back um and you need those um learning curves in order for you to be able to explore that which i'm sure you've been through and i'm sure the listeners will have come across the time where they've gone yeah actually do you know what i pushed a bit too much here and i needed to take a step back and uh that's something i'll never do again yeah this is exactly the reason that i reached out to you in the first place and I'll, i remember it so clearly on our consultation call i literally said to you, I was like, well, I know for the last 18 months, I, I've had, going to have had to sacrifice some things because I was going all in, I was growing aesthetic strength, I was helping people, I was doing good. And you went, that's not how it should be. I was like, hey, and just the, your whole thought process behind things just hit home massively with me. And it's actually a message that I just relay onto our clients now because it is so powerful. And it's the whole thing that lots of people will go, I'm going all in on my professional career, I'm going all in on my business, whatever you want to be, I'm going all in on this thing. If you neglect your body and your brain, your body's only forming 80%, your brain's only forming 80%, how can you give 100% of other things? Like, it just, you can't. And I'd never heard anyone position something to me like that because I definitely think that I was on the brink of 
not burnout, but starting to dice and stepping over that line. When, when I reached out and I said to you, I'm doing this because I want to be proactive because I know how big 2021 is going to be. Um, and it's been a massive turning point for me. So I just want to kind of touch on the kind of energy management kind of ethos and the kind of push and pull ethos that you have um, so that people can kind of utilize this when they've got exams, when they've got busy periods of work, when they've got busy periods of anything, understanding how to kind of manage that. Yeah, incredible. I think mate, big thing to note is that balance doesn't exist. That's number that's number one. Like for me for so long, like I was always just trying to kind of like balance everything. And then by trying to balance everything and be the best at everything, I ended up just being pretty much average at everything. Um, and in my mind, I was giving the very best, but I fundamentally wasn't. So I think it's important to understand one big realization for me is that balance doesn't exist. It's a sliding scale. And for me now, it's about raising awareness around how can I now, if I'm going to push and I'm going to go all in, so let's now think about listeners um, in terms of like exams or whatever it is they potentially have going on, you know, that's going to be your biggest priority right now. So with that in mind, instead of then just neglecting everything else and going, right, okay, I'm just going to park that to one side and I'll, I'll take better care of that once I finish that exam or I get to that point. It's about how can I now start to protect the downside and mitigate the risk and how can I now start to raise awareness? Because by you raising awareness and by you asking yourself those better questions, it allows you then to facilitate and give yourself better answers. So for me, whenever I work with anybody, it's about, right, okay, well, what is your biggest kind of KPI? What are your biggest KPIs right now? Or the biggest kind of um, focal points or key result areas that you're now wanting to double down on? Right, okay, Joe, it's now going to be business for the next 90 days. Okay, cool, perfect. So with that in mind, what do we now need to make sure that we're going to protect, we're going to mitigate, and we're going to look at, and we're going to look after in order to make sure that we can now present and give you the best opportunity for you to be able to thrive in business, but also now look after the balance side of things, right? Okay, what non-negotiables have you got in place with your relationship? They might not potentially be as much as you would typically like, um, but right, okay, what are going to be the one to three non-negotiables that you can still put in place? So for example, for me, it's going to be walk the dog every day, have dinner with my partner every single night, and then make sure a Saturday afternoon evening is basically spent being fully engaged doing whatever we're going to do. Like, right, okay, would I like that to be more? Yes. But right now with where I am, where my focus is and where my energy is, I know that that's my non-negotiable. That's the communication that we've now verbalized and we're clear on and we're okay with that. Um, and that is, it's just about a raising awareness and knowing and understanding, right, okay, how can I now protect the downside with the other aspects in the other areas I've got by putting non-negotiables in place by, and verbalizing that and giving yourself that opportunity to ask yourself better questions and get really clear on what are you working towards um, and how can you now push, pull uh, and manage, right, okay, where you're now spending your energy uh, and looking at not good or bad, but is this helping me or is this not helping me yep. get closer to now where I want to be? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the biggest things that I've kind of learned is like for me, I know Monday is just a mental day. So for me to go and deadlift on a Monday where it's going to be super fatiguing, super taxing, and I know that's one of my longer sessions, it's just setting me up to fail. Whereas I've shifted it to a bench session where I can go in, get a good pump, get energized from that that's session, back. and then I feel great. Then Tuesday is a bit of a quieter day, a bit more chilled. I can go and do that deadlift day. So I think it's a case of looking and just evaluating. Um, I heard this really good analogy the other day about RPE. So obviously we all know training perspective, RPE, rate of perceived exertion. And oh my God, I'm going to butcher this now. Put me on the spot. RPE, it's like um, some something plan execute. Re -eval <laughs> re -eval I think it's reevaluate, plan execute. And I was like, that's so good because we can relate it to training, but it's just constantly having that um, awareness to be able to make the small little decisions that are going to allow you to manage that energy and allow, allow you to push and pull. Because if you say yes and no, then you're just setting yourself up to fail long-term as well, because you've got to manage in the moment to be able to move forwards. I completely agree. Yeah, oh mate, huge, absolutely massive. And I think, again, it comes back down to that, that awareness and that ability to now be able to focus on how am I now going to manage my weeks to make sure that I can manage my energy to the best of my ability? Or how am I now managing my energy in and around the weeks that I've currently got in place? And how can you start to reverse engineer that? Like, we often spend so much time basically being like a Mac computer where you've got about 30 different tabs open at all times and operating at 50%. Instead of now, like for me, one of the big things that I actually took from The Power of Full Engagement, which is an incredible book that I highly recommend everybody read goes and reads, <laughs> which, is, which is centered around like, think more like an athlete. Like an athlete spends the majority of their time recovering, 
training, serving and looking after them for them to be able to perform at their very best for 10% of the time. Uh, they take so much opportunity after a competitive season to take a month, two months, three months away. Uh, and they spend a lot of the time focusing on restoration and giving themselves the best opportunity to, for them to be able to perform when required. You don't expect Usain Bolt to run sub 10 seconds every single day of the week or every single week of the year. You know, you expect him to do it once a year, if that. Um, and I think it's important that we set ourselves these expectations of like, I always need to be up here and I need to be thriving and I need to be, you know, operating and performing at my very best instead of now realizing it's a case of, right, okay, how can I now auto-regulate? Do I now need to push today or do I now need to pull today? What do I need to do today in order for me to be able to present my very best self? Because that's going to look different each and every day based upon your energy, where you are, your stress, your life, your business, your work your relationships, whatever you've got going on. And I think it's important that um, we now start to think more like an athlete, blast and cruise, push and pull, and start to manage our energy. We haven't got the luxuries of having three months off. We haven't got the luxuries of having, you know, the afternoon off to nap and sleep and just serve number one. But if we can start to take those modalities and those strategies and those thought processes of the performers that are at the, the, the highest level possible, um, then there's something that we can now really start to learn. Uh, from that which i think is huge yeah absolutely it's definitely a learning process and people will have to keep going at it to try and absolutely nail it but that's when coaches can be so powerful people have been there done it that's why i reached out to you i had someone to hold me to those higher standards and i'll hold myself taking the words out of your mouth not mine <laughs> no, 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 absolutely and i think it's this thought process as well it's like you are always going to be your own worst critic and you're always going to have this thought process of like, I can do more, I can be more, I can achieve more, I need to keep going, I need to keep pushing and I need to keep striving. And then when you don't, and you don't turn up and you don't perform, that's when emotional volatility starts to come in. You start to question yourself, self-worth goes down, we start to speak to ourselves in this kind of negative way. Um, and then the spiral then starts to have an impact on every other aspect of life. Instead of now having somebody that you're going to be able to communicate with, somebody that's going to be able to take the emotion out of it, and I'm just listening to a great book by uh, Sir Alex Ferguson. He talks about how that he never wanted to take the training sessions at Man United because if he was taking the sessions within, uh, with Man United, he would be immersed in having the whistle in his hand and being immersed in what was going on right there and then. Whereas the biggest learning curve that he had was having somebody take the session for him so he could take a step back and he could look at the bigger picture. Um, and I thought that was an incredible way just to be able to think about that in terms of our own individual selves. Like we get so immersed in the here and now and we can't see, uh, you know, the wood for the trees. It's not until you take a step back or you get somebody else to uh, pull you back and raise awareness. Do you then start to get really, really clear? Um, and I think that's absolutely key and, and a huge priority. So um, just a quick action step that people can take. I, I typically use like a 4B quadrant, so our body business so again business to you could potentially obviously be career study whatever that might potentially be balance which is relationships and then brain which is your creative time your study time whatever it might potentially be even a little bit of fun time in there as well and i just want you to get really clear on okay what are your one to three or three to five non-negotiables across body business brain and balance that you now need to facilitate and need to absolutely 100 must happen um now today this week this month um, and how can you, again, now take the opportunity to realize where are you spending and placing more of your energy right now? What quadrant are you spending more time in? And then with doing so, how can you still make sure that you've then got the other pieces of the puzzle in place that you can protect and look after? And then once you facilitate that 90 day goal or that exam or whatever it is that you're working towards, how can then you pull back and then start to place a little bit more focus and energy into another area, another aspect, and then do exactly what you've just done with the business component, right? Okay, what is the minimum effect of those? What are the basic non-negotiables that I need? Because this is a marathon, it's a journey. It's, it's not necessarily a, a sprint of how quickly can I get there? Yeah, I literally said this on a, in a previous episode. I literally recorded one this morning and it was just saying how, I think there's this big stigma, particularly in the fitness industry at the moment, we can relate it to anything in life really, where people want more from more. You take a, a, a woman who's trying to lose weight and she's like, hey, look, I got into this shape and I only ate 800 calories a day. Well done. You made it 10 times harder than you needed to. This guy, look, look how big my biceps are. I did German high volume training every single day for six months. <laughs> now I can't move my elbows. But um, there's this whole thing about more from more. Personally, I think people should be trying to get more from less. Learn where your minimum effective doses are, what you can do to kind of get the most from the least because you don't need to make it harder than it needs to be. Do what you need to do to get the result that you want. Um, just on that, what are your top two non-negotiables in each body business brain imbalance? 
Uh, so for me, body is going to 100% be sleep. That's an absolute priority. And then number two for me is just going to be making sure from a training perspective that I'm facilitating whatever is now necessary because I know in whatever block or whatever phase that I'm in, um, number one, sleep for me is, again, the greatest restorative mechanism that we have at our disposal. I know that if my sleep is out of whack, that impacts um, appetite, hunger, energy, mood, all of the above. Um, and then secondly, my training for me is my opportunity for me to be able to uh, spend some time for me. Uh, it allows me to really ask myself the question, what am I truly capable of? How far can I now push? And that transpires, I don't know about you, sorry, but bodybuilding for me taught me so much about life and discipline. Um, and th that training is an opportunity for me to be able to express myself. And it's an opportunity for me to be able to really demand more for myself. But also at points, it's about now recognizing is this sustaining me or is this just, or is this draining me? So like, for example, for you, like, you know, a deadlift session is typically going to drain you. It's not going to sustain you. You're going to, after the deadlift session, want to go for a nap. So it's about how can you understand what do I need to get from this session based upon what I've got going on today? And I think that's it. Like, so today, for example, I just did a pump session because I know that I've just had an hour physio session. I've got a call with you and then I've also got to deliver a webinar. So if I went and smashed myself to pieces, you wouldn't be getting a very good Joe right now. And uh, the people later wouldn't be getting a very good Joe. So it's about now looking at with your training, how can you auto-regulate? Do I now need to push and go all in and demand more for myself? Or do I now need this session to sustain me where I walk away and I'm like, wow, I'm ready to rock and roll and I feel awesome. Uh, business for me is how am I serving my clients to the best of my ability every single day? Like that's the most important thing. Three questions I ask myself every day. How am I serving myself to the best of my ability today? How am I serving those closest family uh, and my clients to the best of my ability today? And then what am I doing today that my future self will thank me for? So within that business component, that could potentially be, you know, building a system that might potentially be uh, developing authority by jumping on a podcast. But what is the, now the one thing that I'm going to do today that my future self will now thank me for that I can now sow the seeds that I'm going to reap the rewards in one, three, five years, 10 years time? instead of thinking, how do I need to get a direct return on investment from this? Yeah, absolutely. My, I think my biggest one when we're relating to either business or exams, it's just planning. Mm -hmm. It, it kind of, for me, it jumps back before any of it. If you plan, fail to plan, plan to fail. That whole basic system. One of the most powerful books, the books I said that changed my life was The One Thing. Yeah. Um, most incredible book. I was the king of procrastination. Like, I, I never even said this, it took me nine, nearly nine months to message Adam after I'd found out about him. Uh, ben Mark, the photographer, uh, kind of put me in touch. It took me nine months. If I'd just messaged him, I do not know where aesthetic strength would be with nine months, but everything happens for a reason. But you need to plan because I think if you plan, then you don't procrastinate. If you don't procrastinate, you take action. You take action, you get results. Okay, so yeah. for me, that can start also, if we can take it right back, that can start the night before. So you plan the day, the night before, and that can initiate kind of nighttime routine, which underpins sleep. Um, and then that looks after absolutely everything in my eyes. I think the big thing is as well, dude, on, on that subject is when we think about planning, the problem that I've had and the biggest mistake that I've made is that I was trying to micromanage every single minute of every single second of every single hour of every single day. And one big thing that I've now um, kind of raised awareness around is like, how can my future self thank me uh, for, for what I'm doing? Because like, you're almost like, right, okay, the night before tomorrow, my diary now looks like, as an example, yeah, <laughs> it's militant, it's to, to precision. And then when that doesn't happen, you're then almost on this cascade of, well, I'm not winning, I'm not succeeding, I'm off plan, I'm not where I need to be, and you feel behind. And then all of a sudden, that's now creating... Um, again, problems for you on a personal level, instead of now thinking, well, okay, how can I now just give myself, my future self, something to thank my previous self for by giving yourself that bandwidth and that flexibility and that freedom. And again, instead of now thinking and planning time, think and plan energy yeah. um, around, right, okay, I use a simple kind of traffic light system, green, amber, red. Is this task now going to be a high energy task? Is it going to be a meh, okay task or is it going to be a low level, low energy task? Um, and again, when you can start to raise awareness around those different things in your life, that's going to allow you to understand where am I spending energy right now? Where am I renewing energy? And um, where am I wasting energy? Uh, and then how can you start to improve that, which fundamentally is only going to give you more bandwidth for then you to be able to do the things that are going to allow you to be 
the most fulfilled and also have the most fun and be the most creative because we end up filling our day with stuff that we don't need to do or we feel like we should be doing because others are instead of now thinking right okay is this serving me or is it not and is this now sustaining me or is it draining me um and can i now systemize this delegate this or eradicate this because it's not in alignment with my values and my highest priorities um and actually it would be much better for me to give that to somebody else um so i could now double down and focus on the things that i'm great at or the things that i enjoy which is going to give you the, a higher degree of self-confidence, self-worth, self-belief and all those other things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's with that is scheduling downtime, um, which is probably key, man. One thing that I've implemented probably in this year has been working in like 50 minute blocks or 70 minute blocks or whatever it is. And just giving me like work 50 minutes, 10, I go outside, walk around the garden, deep, a like, bit of fresh right. air, just something for me. And then I go bang. And my productivity has gone through the absolute roof. Like I might, I might get the same amount of work done in the same time, but it just does not feel like a chore at all. Like sometimes you'd be getting when you've done three, four hours work of work straight, you find yourself staring at the screen. You're like, realistically, I'm doing half the amount of work I should do. Try that and implement it. You can start at 20 minutes on 10 minutes off, but just slowly build that up. Like honestly, I found such a difference from doing that. Yeah, I think it's that validation. You know, you always feel like you have to be doing something and then you end up just staring at the screen. <laughs> Fascinating, like you say, because you want that to warrant in your mind that you feel like you're doing something instead of now going, right, okay, what needs to get done today? What are the non-negotiables? What, what and how long is that now going to take? And then what am I going to do with my other time that I now have? And just, again, plan that in um, so that you can have that fun, that creativity, that time away, because that's going to give you the opportunity to have the freedom in your mind for you then to come back in an even better place for you then to be able to thrive and move forwards in whatever aspect or area of your life that is yeah another awesome book is um the craig ballantyne the perfect week formula great yeah. very 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 interesting um mate just moving on to things um what's the biggest mistake you've made in your fitness journey uh, i think probably the biggest thing for me was trying to pretend to be somebody that i wasn't uh trying to basically pretend to be or act as if act in a way that I thought others wanted me to be instead of actually just being Joe. Uh, I spent so long basically just trying to conform to societal norms and thinking this is how the fitness industry is or this is how they want me to be or need me to be um, instead of actually just being Joe and living in accordance to my values, my priorities, and my beliefs. Um, and I think that's probably the biggest thing that I struggle with and carried a lot of baggage with. And then the problem was I was then attracting people that were nice people but they weren't in alignment. We didn't have that connection, but I was pretending to be somebody that I wasn't. So I was attracting them. And then there was this disconnect and this friction uh, that what then wasn't serving me and it wasn't serving them. And then we didn't necessarily get the result that we'd have liked because we're misaligned, but that wasn't their fault. That was my fault because of the energy that I was giving off. So um, I think for me, it's just like being authentically, openly and honestly me and being able to appreciate that the reason and now why I can do what I do and I will continue to do is because of the lessons, the vulnerabilities, the challenges, the struggles, the failures, the difficulties that I've now had um, and my ability to be confident and open and honest enough to be able to express those and speak about those because I know that that's going to be able to allow me to connect and help and engage and meet others at the level that I know that I can help them with. So I think that was a big thing for me was, yeah, trying to pretend to be somebody that I wasn't um, uh, as a byproduct of trying to either copy people, replicate people, um, yeah, or conform based upon what I thought other people wanted me to be instead of just being me. <laughs> I, think, I think that's probably it. What about you, dude? That's so powerful. One of my biggest was definitely just not listening to the people who are around me a little bit just being a little bit egotistical. I was a mate. I was so lucky as a young kid. I had some incredible coaches around me and I took their word for absolute gospel. And then I kind of came out of that as I finished kind of with them. And then I kind of thought I knew it all and uh, I didn't. And it's funny because I actually put something up in my uh, poll, a uh, story that I put a poll, like, you know, the little swipe thing is like, how, how good do you think your knowledge is around training and nutrition? And the amount of people who put like real near the top and then you get the likes of, people like yourself and some of the top coaches like in the inner circle, like these are some of the, some of the best coaches in, in the UK and they're putting like as close to the bottom as physically possible. And it comes the, the more, you know, you realize, you know, the, the least. Yeah, um, yeah. And obviously I think that was just like something being young, but for anyone out there, just realize that there's always someone bigger. There's always someone smarter. There's always someone stronger and just listen to the people around you. You're always constantly learning because there's always something that you can learn from absolutely anyone even if you don't necessarily align with 
their mission, their goals, their kind of statements, they're going to mention something. You're going to be like, oh, maybe I like that. Or I don't like that, but let's try it. Oh, I like the idea. I can put my own kind of spin on that. And it's been super, super powerful. Yeah, dude, I love that. I think that's awesome. Um, so, mate, you've got some big goals at the moment. Talk to me about them, training-wise. Um, so, oh, well, first things first, uh, looking at uh, over the next kind of 90 days, boxing off a half Ironman, then Ironman. But that's fundamentally leading to uh, the Great Euro Try in 2022, which is, I'm not sure really where it came from. I'll, I'll, be, on, I'll be honest <laughs> with you. Um, I was sat in my garden one day and was, must have been, I don't know, <laughs> bored and uh, came up with this idea. A couple of years ago, I cycled the name for the country. I did uh, John O'Groats and Land's End to raise some money for uh, cancer research, which was incredible. The best thing that I'd ever done in my life. I came, I've came, i come from obviously a footballing background, then competed in bodybuilding uh, and then just thought, you know what? I want to be able to get to the end of my life, as deep as that might potentially sound, and look back and go, I really capitalized and utilized my physical and mental capabilities to the best of my ability. Um, I had no regrets and I can tell the grandkids, oh, listen, this is cool. I, I did this as an example, you know? Um, and for me, it was just like realizing that bodybuilding was great and I loved it, but I was basically more of an ornament than an instrument, as Ross Edgley would say. Uh, and for me, it was then looking at, right, okay, the John O'Groats Land's End, best experience of my life. I was actually just telling some friends that after that 10 days of a thousand miles, I basically just cried my eyes out for hours once I reached the finish <laughs> line, um, which again was crazy. And that's something I never experienced before, uh, which has now kind of led into uh, the Great Euro Try, which is going to be cycle the lane for the country, uh, John O'Groats to Dover, which uh, is then going to be uh, followed by swimming in the English Channel, which is going to be 21 miles if you go the fast way around, uh, depending on depend, depend, on the current uh, and then i'm going to run from we're going to run from uh, calais to paris uh, off the back of that which is going to be 165 miles which is going to be we're looking at at the moment kind of averaging 30 miles a day so 850 miles from john O'Groats to dover swim the channel and then yeah 165 mile um ultra marathon pretty much every day for five or six days to uh, to get to the eiffel tower and then um i'm probably not going to be able to walk <laughs> a, few, a few a few months but it'll be great it's going to be it's going to be good fun yeah, mate, it's, been, it's been nice knowing you. <laughs> I'll, start, know. I'll start looking for another coach now. <laughs> yeah, I'll be I'll be on the, I'll be on the front of a PO ferry, just plastered to just plastered to it. <laughs> just a small little speck in the ocean as these ferries are just blasting past. So uh, so yeah, I, I'm I'm excited to uh, explore that and at the same instance really be able to now make sure that I can continue to thrive and excel in every other aspect and area of my life in terms of the way in which I look. Uh, because before I feel as though that I could feel the breeze up the sleeve of my t-shirt when I've done endurance work and I didn't like that. So how can I now really build this triathlete physique? Um, and then yeah, make sure that I can continue to have the greatest amount of impact to clients and also be the very best Joe that I can be to those that need me the most. Uh, family, Leanne, Lola, the dog, probably the most important. <laughs> honestly, oh, absolutely. Well, mate, honestly, I'm super excited to w w watch your journey. It's, uh, it's truly inspirational. I want to say a massive thank you um, for coaching me it's been uh, incredible and completely eye-opening what are your three top tips for people wanting to crush their fitness journey in 2021 i think number one back and believe in yourself the reality is often there's going to be doubters naysayers people that tell you that you can't you won't you shouldn't and often people that are going to that are going to try and tear you down um and i think it's this ability to be able to build trust in yourself uh, get really crystal clear on what you want to accomplish why you want to achieve it um and then just lock and load and go absolutely all in because there's always going to be somebody that's going to doubt you that doesn't think it's going to be possible i think you just now have to build that trust in yourself and you have to have that unwavering self-belief in terms of where you're going and the type of impact you know that's then going to have on your self-confidence your ability to develop uh, develop and deliver the very best person that you now possibly can so i think back and believe in yourself. The first person that you now need to believe in is you uh, in order then for you to have, be able to have others around you that are going to support you other than potentially a coach who sometimes will instill more belief in you than you currently have in yourself. Which, um, number two, have fun. Enjoy the process. I think we often place ourselves under this so much self-applied pressure um, that it has to be a certain way instead of taking the opportunity just to be present in the here and the now i think we always have this thought process of like when i reach x goal or when i reach y body weight or when i reach z target i'm then gonna have look feel like this instead of now realizing that often you can get there and if you haven't now been able to enjoy the steps along the way uh, the reality is you're going to get there you're going to be pretty disappointed the goalposts are going to be uh, the goalposts are then going to move um, and that cycle is now going to repeat so i think it's the ability just to be able to 
enjoy the here and now, enjoy the process and enjoy the journey because it's never going to be the end destination because that's not going to be the fulfilling thing. And if it is, you'll feel great for five minutes. And then like you say, you're on to the next. So I think be present um, is going to now be absolutely key. Um, and then number three, I'm trying to think of something, something different that I could, that I could bring to the table other than, other than the usual. Um, <laughs> it's thinking hard here. I am, mate. I am trying to, I'm trying to think of, of something kind of different and something that I'm kind of experiencing with, with my coaches just now. I think for me, the kind of the, the, the final one would probably be make sure that um, everything that you now do is an expression of you. Don't try to now be somebody that you're not and don't try to now compare yourself to somebody else. Because the reality is, um, if we look at the kind of acronym that I use, which is re uh, reputation, assets, credibility and experience, when you spend your time comparing yourself to somebody else that's maybe at a different level or a different stage or a different phase or has different values from you, there's always going to be this disconnect and this feeling of, of not being worthy or feeling worthy. So I think it's about making sure that your fitness journey is now going to be an expression for you, uh, expression of you, your values, your likes, your dislikes. Um, and I think taking the opportunity to realize that now you're going to forever be in journey mode um, and it's going to be an incredible opportunity for you now to be able to develop and explore and learn so much about yourself, which in turn, in my opinion, is going to then give you so much that you're then going to be able to um, impart and instill in others uh, because you are your greatest asset. You know, your health is your health is your wealth. And um, fundamentally, I've met and experienced like so many people that have spent so long trying to build their wealth that they have to spend so much of their wealth trying to then build and look after their health instead of now taking the opportunity to now realize that yeah fundamentally you, you are you are your business you you are uh, the very thing that people are going to buy from believe in support follow um and i think it's really important that you just now make sure that yeah you stay in your own lane you stay clear on um what's fulfilling you uh, and making you feel awesome and use others as inspiration and lean into that uh, look for bright spots what they've done what they've experienced and what they've now been through but do not define where they are um as the pinnacle and or a reflection on where you are or where you're not yeah don't compare your chat their chapter 10 to your chapter one that's one of my favorite sayings of all time um honestly mate it's been an absolute pleasure having you on where can everybody find you uh, so best place is probably just going to be Joe Parrish, the coach's coach on Instagram. And probably that's going to be the uh, the best thing. Uh, then if there are any coaches, uh, I've got the high performance coach podcast where I just basically talk shop about a number <laughs> of different, about a number of different topics I could talk all day. So uh, yeah, the high performance coach podcast as well. Uh, but yeah, Joe Parrish, the coach's coach. Awesome. I've just started working my way through the podcast. I, I prefer podcasts when I run to music. I find with music, I just, I'm still there where I've listened to a podcast or an audio book. I just disappear. Um, listening to Ant Middleton's The Fear Bubble at the moment. Very, very, very good. Um, but honestly, again, thank you so much for coming on, guys. If you liked the episode, please leave it a five-star review. Also, make sure you share it onto your story. Give me and Joe a tag. I'll leave everything in the description below and I will see you in the next episode.